Have you ever wondered what is this drill bit used for? Or perhaps if there's a better drill bit suited for what you're drilling into. Having the right tool for the job makes all of the difference. It will save you time, money, effort, and will improve your results. By the end of this video, you'll know all of the intricacies of the most common drill bits and what every drill bit is best suited for. You'll also know how the geometry and material of your bits affect your result. First of all, you have your common drill bit used for metal and wood. However, there's a lot more that goes into selecting the right bit from its material to its tip shape, coating, and flute design. The most common materials are high-speed steel, also known as HSS, cobalt, and carbide. Then there's your common coatings, which are black oxide, black and gold, and titanium nitride. HSS drill bits are by far the most common for a couple of reasons. Mainly, it's readily available, inexpensive, and suited for drilling both because it's hard enough to cut, yet forgiving enough for imperfect use as is in handheld drills. Cobalt drill bits are harder than high-speed steel, meaning that they're more durable and have better heat resistance. However, this increase in hardness can lead to slightly more chipping in a handheld application. And finally, carbide drill bits. Carbide is far more expensive than high-speed steel. However, carbide can last up to 20 times more than your standard high-speed steel. This is with a caveat, however. Because of this much greater hardness, chipping is a major concern, so it's not quite suited for all the handheld applications. Instead, carbide is used primarily in CNC machines and drill presses. Then we have our coatings that can improve and extend the life of your bit. Black oxide drill bits increase the lubricity of your drill bit. This means that it'll heat up less while in use, and this will significantly extend the life of your bit. This also reduces oxidation and is inexpensive. Then we have black and gold oxide drill bits, which offer the benefits of black oxide while also increasing its chip resistance and corrosion resistance. Then we have titanium nitride. This coating increases the drill bit's surface hardness, lowers its friction, and further reduces the heat that it experiences, which offers increased longevity and increased corrosion protection. And there are other materials and coatings, but these are by far the most common. Before moving on to some of the more unique bits, we have to cover the importance of bit geometry. The most important factor when looking at geometry are web thickness and drill point. Drill bits are seen as a cylinder. However, it's best thought of as a flat piece of steel that's bent into a cylinder. Thinking of it this way, you can see how the thickness of the flute is important. The thinner the flute, the thinner the flat bar is, making it weaker. We can see on this 3D printed cross section that we have this thin bar here, which makes its way around the entire bit. This establishes the bit strength, meaning that a thicker web will make a stronger bit. So for heavy duty applications, you want to use a thick webbed bit. And this begs the question, why aren't all bits just thick? The thing is, the thicker the web, the worse the chip ejection and the faster it will clog. So it's a balance between proper chip ejection and strength. The next important factor is the tip angle. And there are a large array of angles. However, 118 degrees and 135 degrees are by far the most common. And there are some important differences between these. The 118 degree has a steeper angle over the 135 degree, meaning a larger edge and a more aggressive cut. For this reason, 118 degrees is best suited for mild steel and wood, while 135 degree bits can be used on harder steel, as it works slower and removes less material at a time. 118 degree bits also tend to walk a little bit more on your material, as there's no actual sharp point that keeps it centered at the beginning. There's also very steep bits like these that are suited for cutting acrylic and other plastics, as a typical bit usually blows out the other end. This bit instead continues to cut slowly as you finish, reducing the risk of breaking your material. This is because the shallow cuts of a standard bit can end up feeding into the threads at the end and shatter the material. Additionally, the cutting edge is 90 degrees to the material, while traditional bits have a much more aggressive angle. All right, well, these bits are the most common. Let's move on to the other large array of bits that exist. The auger is one of the oldest bits in history and has been used for centuries. 
Today, there are many alternatives to this bit, including the speed bore, paddle bit, and Forstner bit. Your traditional auger bit is tried and true, and with some improvements over the years, including the screw tip and cutting edge, the auger is one of the best for its application. Augers can make very deep holes thanks to its large and long flute. It also makes very clean cuts while also being very fast. This tail here slices the wood, then the edge cuts the material out while the screw tip feeds in the bit with power and speed. The spur wood bit is very similar to the auger but suited for smaller diameter holes. Paddle bits, also known as spade bits, have large points for easy centering and two sharp edges that slice the wood and a flat end rips out the material. This is faster than an auger and is designed for making fast and large diameter holes in materials that are usually no thicker than 6 inches. The paddle bit prioritizes speed, typically leaving a poor finish on the material. The speed bore is a combination of the auger and the paddle bit, providing slightly better chip ejection with the flutes, but again prioritizing speed with that screw tip and three flat chisel edges. For fast cuts, and again, these are meant for materials no thicker than two to four inches. The Forstner bit is on the other end of the scale to the speed bore. This prioritizes clean edges and nice cuts with lower cutting speed. The Forstner bit uses serrated edges to cut the material while the two blade edges remove material. This bit also allows making partial cuts in materials, something that a lot of other bits struggle with. But again, this is only suited for two to four inches of depth. Next, we have step bits and hole saws, which allow for larger diameter holes in steel and wood while using a handheld drill. For example, a drill bit this size should never be used on a handheld drill, as its force is too high to maintain good control. However, step bits and hole saws allow you to make these larger diameter holes with less effort. The step bit works by removing far less material at a time, making it much slower option than your traditional bit, but it offers the necessary control for your handheld drill. Though this is designed for relatively thin material, no more than a quarter of an inch thick is recommended, and even at that, you're pushing the limits of this tool. The hole saw allows for larger diameter holes, only cutting the diameter itself, leaving the material in the center untouched. This reduces the amount of work the bit has to do. This, however, comes with its own issues. Again, it's only designed for relatively thin material, and aside from that, it's very hard to control if you have uneven contact with your material. A center drill bit helps keep your saw in place and is necessary for this bit to touch the material before your hole saw. This can sometimes present some issues, as was for me, with this corrugated material where I had to make the hole right where the ridge was. This did not allow my bit to contact the material first and eliminated the option of using a hole saw which would have been a perfect option here. Next, we have another important bit that everyone should own, the masonry bit. Using a traditional bit on brick, stone, or concrete will immediately destroy the edge and leave your bits dull as a rock. After this, you might as well use the rock to try to drill things. That being said, when drilling into materials like this, it's important to use an actual masonry drill bit. These bits can be distinguished by the wider and taller chisel tip at the end of the bit. In contrast to your other bits, this doesn't have a sharp cutting edge. Instead, it's more akin to a chisel than a blade. This tip breaks and cracks the material as opposed to cutting it. And for this reason, bits like this should be used with hammer drills, which have a hammering action that allows the bit to break the material. The countersink and deburr bit are used to make chamfers in wood or soft metals, so your hardware can sit nice and flush to your material. It's also often used just to deburr the edges, removing rough edges from materials after drilling. The next drill bit is an interesting one, the mortise bit. This bit is used for drilling square holes into material and works with a combination of a drill bit and a square chisel. The drill bit makes a round hole as large as possible and then the square part, which is harnessed to the body of the drill press, chisels the square shape out of the wood. It's a similar concept to just drilling a round hole and just removing the edges with a chisel. This can be used for making shallow slots in wood that would be difficult to do any other way. There are many more less common bits used on drills and much more to know such as sharpening and proper use for maximum longevity on your tools. However, that's a topic for another video and these are the most common drill bits. 
Now, none of the bits or tools in this video were sponsored, but if you're interested in buying any of the tools shown, there's links in the description below that support the channel and help us continue to make this content at no extra cost to you.